Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Thank you again, Bishop. Thank you for this opportunity. Let's lift up our hands to heaven and give God the praise while asking him to speak to us yet again. I believe you have been blessed through the previous sessions. But God is coming to you again with a word that will lift, a word that will transform. Lift your hands, lift your voices, and let's ask for grace, grace to understand, grace to be impacted by his word. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Speak to me, O God. Grant me access to your wisdom this morning. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask that you will speak to us yet again. Let your word come with power. Let it transform us. Let it take us to heights unimagined in the spirit and in destiny. We vow to give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you very much again for this opportunity. I hope I'm clear enough. Can you hear me? Praise God. Um, we'll go straight to the point. I'm sure that um, you've been blessed already by all of the sessions that have come this morning. We'll continue from where we left off yesterday night. We're doing a teaching series, The Path of the Just. And yesterday we took our time to consider the power of choices and decisions. I did tell us yesterday that your decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny. You still remember that? That my life and your life will always be at the mercy of our decisions this morning we'll be looking at part two the power the path of the just and we'll be looking at the power of superior belief systems i want you to lend me your attention very carefully proverbs chapter 4 please proverbs 4 23 will we have it projected again okay the bible says guard or keep your heart with all diligence it says for out of it are the issues of life guard or keep protect your heart with all diligence it says from out of it are the issues of life one more scripture proverbs 23 and verse 7 proverbs 23 and verse 7 it says for as he thinketh in fact let's read together ready one to read for as he thinketh in his heart you just stop there we're reading the a part one more time for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will be your reality is a summation of your belief systems now write this down please our realities in this kingdom are shaped by our belief systems our realities in this kingdom are shaped essentially by our belief systems shaped by our mindsets shaped by the quality of our thinking this is very profound that an individual's reality is not necessarily shaped by conditions circumstances it looks like our lives have been shaped by conditions and circumstances. But after today's teaching, you will realize that your reality is a merciless reflection of your belief system. Are we together? That your condition up until this point is a product of your thinking. Most results in our lives start as a mentality before becoming a reality most results in our lives start first as a mentality are we together 
before becoming a reality excellence is first a mentality before a reality failure is first a mentality before it manifests victory is first a mentality before it becomes your reality kindness is first a mentality before it becomes a reality are you following now wickedness is first a mentality before it becomes a reality i'm just listing for you the possibilities that find expression in the lives of men and to tell you that they are first belief systems before experiences envy is first a mentality before it becomes a reality love is first a mentality before it becomes a reality diligence is first a mentality before it becomes an experience laziness is first a mentality before it becomes a reality do you see that most of the things we are trying to change we are trying to change them the wrong way so our approach usually is to change the experience while preserving the mentality that is like trying to stop water from flowing by taking away the bucket and leaving the tap on will the water ever stop flowing you see that now so to try to change your physical condition just by altering the physical experience without the mentality is a total waste of time are we following so far that the reality that you and i will experience in our lives is usually mostly a reflection your physical environment good or bad is a report card is telling us what is going on with your thinking telling us what is going on with your belief system if you are lazy it is not the action of laziness that is the problem is that there is a mentality that has created that behavior you call laziness when you find yourself walking in wickedness envy anger and all of that it's not just a physical problem so most people try to solve mentality issues by dealing with the consequences and not the causes are you ready for an upgrade this morning so when the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light it then tells you that for every dimension of glory you want to step into there must be a mentality that parallels that glory are we together for you will never truly rise higher than your mindset every time listen here's how it works every time you receive something in your life that is higher than your belief system your destiny will interpret it as an error it will alter your life to bring you back to a state that that is equivalent to your thinking so i give you an example if you are someone who has been i hate to use the finances but let's use finances you have a mentality that has not ascended financially if someone were to give you a million ghana cities with a mentality of a poor person are we together that condition will be interpreted in the realm of the spirit as an error and a lot of things will start happening in your life you think are coincidences until it brings you to a state where your physical expression becomes consistent with your thinking is the reason why good things do not stay in the lives of many people because physical things come to their lives that does not match their transformation are you learning now the flip side is also true that if you are in a condition that is not healthy and you decide to transit in your mind the realm of the spirit will interpret that condition as unfair and you have to grow to match the level things will change in your life yes sir this these are god's laws they are not suggestions so for instance when you are someone who has a mentality of gratitude and thankfulness and yet no reward comes to your life the very justice system of god will insist that you must be rewarded this is what happened to mordecai Mordecai had the mentality of kindness and he showed kindness to King Ahasuerus but he was not rewarded the Bible says one night when it was time for God to lift him God himself ceased sleep 
from Ahasuerus until Mordecai was rewarded to match his mentality. Are we learning? Let me remind you again that love is first a mentality before an experience. Wickedness, a mentality before an experience. Excellence, a mentality before an experience. Now the challenge is that most believers have not been taught that their lives are a messless reflection of their belief systems. So they labor endlessly and even in failure trying to change their physical environment. When you find someone you perceive to be stubborn and maybe you use some whip or you are harsh on the person, the person will say, I will change. Have you heard such a thing like that? And then go back to do the exact same thing. Now I will tell you where demon spirits come into place. But like you have learned yesterday, demon spirits are opportunists a certain condition activates their ministry they don't just veto the state of man and do anything they wait for a, a certain mentality and they prey upon it are you learning this morning already now for the purpose of our discussion this morning there are two kinds of mentality that I want to discuss with you. Number one is called a loser's mentality. There is such a thing as a loser's mentality. A loser's mentality is the belief system that produces a defeated believer. A defeated individual is called a loser's mentality. A loser's mentality is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking. I'm being careful and simple this morning because I want everybody to get the message. A loser's mentality is a sustained, faulty pattern of thinking based on lies, based on deception, and based on error. A sustained, faulty pattern of thinking that is based on lies, based on deception based on error many times that thinking pattern gets fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the individual in that state perpetually it's called a loser's mentality a good man can have a loser's mentality a preacher can have a loser's mentality a christian genuinely born again can have a loser's mentality having a loser's mentality has nothing to do with being a bad person you have become a victim of a programming that is against scripture are we learning now and let me tell you the truth there are many good people who have a loser's mentality it is responsible for their failure in life I have seen very good people and sometimes you are tempted to ask God why would such a good man be going through these kinds of things because even if you put listen um, sorry to play with your mind but how many of you know that if you crack a rotten egg and put it in a nice plate it does not stop the egg from being rotten and it does not stop the smell even though the plate is nice that is how a a loser's mentality upon a sincere destiny it will still produce an ugly result this is not about being good or bad are we together now many believers have a loser's mentality perhaps i should digress for a moment and teach you something that is very important for your spiritual growth i hope you know that the journey of the believer is in stages now theologically speaking you may have heard me teach this that everybody starts as an unbeliever i hope you know that everybody starts spiritually speaking as an unbeliever that is the starting point of all men in iniquity did my mother conceive me so we start as unbelievers with that nature of sin now at salvation the bible teaches that a translation happens are we together but now that translation is a spirit affair it does not affect your mind yet at the point of declaring the lordship of jesus it is not your body that is changing it is not your mind that is changing it is a spirit affair you are rejoined to christ are we together when you become a believer 
now you have the life of Christ but the riches of that life may never find expression in your life because it is knowledge dependent the experience that comes with that Zoe life is transformation dependent so you can be saved genuinely saved and yet your results does not change the reason is because you have not allowed for transformation like we discussed yesterday so the next project after salvation is transformation are we together and you may have heard me teach it there are three forces that are responsible for your transformation number one the ministry of the word number two the ministry of the Holy Spirit number three the ministry of a teaching priest these are the threefold ministries that guide you from the point of salvation if you are not exposed to the ministry of a teaching priest if you are not exposed to the ministry of the word if you are not exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit even though your salvation is genuine you cannot grow are we learning now so salvation and then these tripartite forces begin your journey to transformation from a babe an infant you now transit to a matured believer why mature through knowledge through transformation so you now get to the third state you are a transformed believer but even at that state it is still not enough because at this stage now you are not ignorant but you still don't have results because you need the next phase called empowerment so transformation equips you with the requisite knowledge but it does not mean you can defend it when Jesus mentored the disciples after three and a half years they were no longer ignorant but they still could not be witnesses because they were not empowered so he said tarry until you be endued with power is someone learning this morning tarry until you be endued with power at the point where you are empowered you become beyond a believer you are now called a witness a witness so a witness is a certain kind of believer not every believer can be called a witness a witness is a believer who has gone through this journey of salvation transformation through methodical mentorship and then empowerment the witness is the only kind of believer that can produce results that brings glory to the name of the Lord and can defend the interests of God within the cosmos if you're learning say amen. amen so most Christians are saved but they are not transformed and a few who have contended for transformation are not yet empowered and for the few who are empowered they do not understand the dynamics of being an effective witness this is why God allows for conferences like this to give you a spiritual orientation at every level by this description you can know this moment where you stand in that equation some are unsaved thankfully there's hope for you there's room to be saved many are saved but they are not transformed it is clear their mentality shows they are not transformed a few have contended for transformation but they are not empowered and it is very frustrating to know what should be and not have the power to make it happen it is dangerous to only remain transformed because if you are transformed and not empowered you will propose a lot of things that God can do but you will not have the wherewithal to make it happen I'm praying for someone already in the name of Jesus in the course of this conference may you experience all of this journey until you become a true witness for those who are yet to be transformed may this conference be a help a guide that walks you through to become a matured believer and for those who have contended for a certain level of transformation may grace from heaven land upon your life this morning in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated we're discussing superior belief systems I digress to just help you understand this whole journey of the believer so that you are not at a loss so we're discussing a losers mentality see remember that a loser's mentality is not the mindset a bad person has is a mindset that produces defeat out of any life any life at all 
is it all right if i can have a bottle of water i want to make an illustration any bottle of water at all someone help me thank you no no please don't wait the bishop let him have his water thank you all right this is beautiful now look up ghana what do you call this what do you call this a bottle of you call it by the name of what is inside am i right on that if i pour out the water and i put any drink say coca-cola it becomes a bottle of so the bottle never changes but the content can change the name are we together same size same composition but the name changes immediately do you notice that you name it with respect to its content not the container whether it is coca-cola or water it is still in a bottle and if that bottle is you we now define you by what is inside you so you can be called joshua selman the wise joshua selman the foolish joshua selman the poor joshua selman the lazy joshua selman the loving joshua selman the wicked joshua selman the envious joshua selman the anointed joshua selman the careless it is still joshua selman but your mentality keeps vacillating the definition of your name are you learning now this is both discouraging and encouraging discouraging because any name you are called today is not necessarily your name it is a mentality you have embraced encouraging because like every bottle you can pour out the content and bring in something new is someone learning now that means Joshua Selman the foolish can become Joshua Selman the wise Joshua Selman the unbelieving can become Joshua Selman the believer look at this example again this is you coming with a plethora of mindsets some destructive but thank God for conferences like this now you understand what the Holy Spirit is doing this morning for some of you it's taken God many years to open that container you have refused to allow him but I pray that he finally gets a chance to open that container and pour out a lot of useless content contents that you've held on to emotionally connected to what is destroying your life for someone at the end of this service you look how beautiful this bottle is with the container that's how your life will be because God is doing an inner walk he's giving you a superior belief now lay your hands on your head in one minute and say Lord I am ready ready to partner with the Holy Spirit for my transformation go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying this morning. I'm ready in the name of Jesus. Ready for that transition. Ready for that transition. In the name of Jesus. A believer is praying. One who is determined to see the glory of God is praying. In Jesus name we pray. Please be seated. So we're discussing that there are two kinds of belief systems or mentalities have I lost you number one is called a losers mentality and that even a good person even a sincere Christian can have a losers mentality very quickly the other is called a winners mentality the name obviously tells you the kinds of results that come from that mentality is the mentality responsible for victory a winners mentality is a superior belief system a winner's mentality is a superior belief system that has been built based on the word of God and superior word compliant information. A winner's mentality is a superior belief system that has been built based on the word of God and based on superior word compliant information do you understand this so far so on one hand we have a loser's mentality 
built around information that produces failure limitations and defeat I will teach you how those mindsets got there in the first place but then in contrast we have a winners mentality we call it a superior belief system a belief system that has been built based on the Word of God and has been built based on superior word compliant information now write this down please mindsets are gateways and doorways in the spirit profound information mindsets are gateways and doorways in the spirit what does that mean they allow for the ministry of the Holy Spirit to find expression in your life and they allow for the ministry of demons to find expression in your life whether it is the Holy Spirit who influences your life or demon spirits they will follow the gateway called your mindset the official entrance to your destiny is your mindset the official entrance the official access point to any man's destiny is his mindset please look up I want you to look at this door if your eye can get there this is the official access point to this beautiful auditorium am I right now whether you are a good person or whether you are an evil person provided you want to access this auditorium that's the door to follow that's how your mindset is that when the Holy Spirit wants to come into your destiny to influence you for good he is limited by the space your mindset gives him when demon spirits want to come in and met out havoc in your life they also walk through your mindset mindsets are doorways and gateways to your destiny so don't ask how the trouble came I'm telling you how it came the trouble did not come through your uncle no it only acted out through your uncle it came through your mindset how did the favor come the favor did not come through your helper your helper only acted out the favor came through your mindset next time you ask where is all this coming from where did the hatred come from now I'm teaching you it came from your mindset then was acted out through men next time you say where will the promotion come from don't think of your boss's table you are wrong your boss will be a messless actor to what has already entered your destiny through your mindset is someone learning now this is very powerful where will my increase come from my increase will come from oil and gas my increase will come from real estate unfortunately you are wrong in this class as a lecturer I fail you for thinking like that your increase does not come from your real estate your increase comes from your mindset your real estate only delivers what your mindset has received is someone learning now so most people do not know the power of mentality I'm teaching you again that mindsets are doorways and gateways to your destiny they allow for the official entrance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make your life Beulah and Hepzibah to make your life a sign and a wonder or they allow for the entrance of demon spirits to wreak havoc and deplete your life thank you Jesus who is learning this morning the next information you need to know is that the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life any man's life including your life is directly tied to your mindset now the most scary statement that I think I'll be making here this morning is what I'm about to make that a man's mindset can limit God in his life how can a mighty God an unlimited God the all-powerful God how can God become so crippled and limited in a man's life because of his mindset this is how serious this mindset it is Psalm 78 give us verse 41 Psalm 78 and verse 41 
media let's work together 48 78 41 I'd like us to read it together as loud as you can we'll read verse 41 then I will show you why verse 41 was there by going back to verse 19 are you ready to learn this morning let's go one to go yeah they turned back and tempted God help me and limited the Holy One of Israel who did they limit how can a man limit God they limited the operations of God now go back to verse 19 same scripture verse 19 I will read to verse 22 the Bible says this is how they limited God are you ready to read this is how men limit God let's read one to go yea they spake against God and they said can God furnish a table in the wilderness it was a question verse 20 behold he smote the rock that waters gushed out and the streams overflowed can he give bread also can he provide flesh for his people by having that mentality and asking those questions the Bible says they limited God therefore the Bible says the Lord had this so he was hearing what their mindsets were saying he had this and was wroth so a fire was kindled go back to 21 please and anger came upon Israel or against Israel verse 22 now 22 because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation a man can limit a mighty God that God wants to do great and mighty things in your life and yet your mind fights what God wants to do like many of us our minds have fought and continue to fight what God wants to do in ministry in business in your career every time your mindset fights the ways of God fights the ways of God fights scripture fights the Word of God fights the will of God it is limiting God in your life but in the name of Jesus this morning may that limitation be taken may that limitation be taken away from your life a man's mindset can limit God in his life now very quickly I want to show you how mindsets are formed this is a very important part of this discussion I hope you are learning this morning there are six major ways at least as to how mindsets and belief systems are formed I'll give you five for this discussion number one the first way our belief systems are formed is through our cultural experiences culture social studies remember defines culture as a way of life of a people culture culture if I were Ghanaian born Ghanaian I would most likely behave in a certain way are we together there are Ghanaians who were born as British there were Ghanaians who were born as Chinese born as Americans you would be surprised that even though their natural descent were Ghana there would be nothing at all you would almost doubt that they were Ghanaians except that their birth certificates would tell you that their original place of birth was Ghana but nothing around their life because they've been exposed to a cultural experience that is foreign to their native land culture is very important there are healthy aspects of culture like moral excellence like respect but I'm sad to tell you this there are destructive aspects of culture especially the aspects of culture that are anti-christ anti-kingdom anti-god and many people have swallowed everything hook line and sinker to their detriment culture are we learning number two the second shaper and molder of belief systems is your family background pay attention to this your family background now I say this with all due respect not to insult you nor to remind you of sad memories but if you have an experience say for instance being born in a polygamous family jealousy will be a natural thing for you you will not even know there is such a life as to be free from jealousy jealousy and envy it is a natural product 
of that background so even when you grow even as a man of god you will still carry your family in your mentality and incorporate that mindset in ministry you find yourself envious jealous even though you are anointed your family still followed you family backgrounds if you were raised by a responsible father a responsible mother you saw him loving his wife taking care of her the likelihood that you will be an irresponsible father is very low because that was the template that was before you there goes the saying like father like son family backgrounds matter if you come from a family where you have never seen favor the day a preacher says receive favor that prophecy is foreign to your experience because you suffered from birth till adulthood are we together family backgrounds if you came from a family where it was natural to worship idols do you know if God does not help you even when you get born again it will not be unusual for you to still dabble into occultic things because your background allowed it so it's not you don't feel guilty you've done it before you can do it again are we learning family background three what is the third shaper and molder of belief systems if you are learning shout a loud amen, amen. the third molder of your belief systems are your past experiences good or bad past experiences good or bad let me tell you this experiences have such power from your yesterday they can exert influence on your today and even your tomorrow experiences i hope you know that yesterday is very jealous yesterday never allows your day your today and your tomorrow to go in peace it wants to relieve itself again in your today and your tomorrow you must learn how to break away from the limitations of yesterday the failure of yesterday will not seem to leave you in peace it still wants to relieve itself in your today and your tomorrow experiences please look at me let's say you had to spend for some reason 10 years to finish from high school you know that's that's not the normal progression you are already used to delay and pain the day you hear that God can give speed, you will struggle to believe it because your mindset, all your mindset has known is pain and hardship and suffering. Is someone learning this morning? Your past experiences. If you have been disappointed, look up, and you've been heartbroken, whether in a love relationship or in a business relationship, the next time you see anyone, that old experience will come forward and you will start suspecting people. Oh, I want to give you a nice seat. Why? Who are you? Why are you giving me a nice seat? And the person says, why are you this harsh? What did I do? And you say, I'm sorry. I'm coming from a memory of pain and suspicion. Your last prayer partner disappointed you. So when someone says, let us pray, you say, you, let us, I will talk to God by myself. I don't need any prayer partner who carries my issues all over Ghana. No. You see, if you don't change, you will be limited because you will drive away good things because of what happened yesterday. Not everybody is wicked. Not everybody is a demon. Not everybody is a fraudster. Not every man is an unserious man. Not every woman is a deceiver. Don't use yesterday to paint that picture on everyone. Not every pastor is a fraud. Not every prophet is a liar. No, sir. Are we learning now? It's amazing how yesterday can make you become vicious and unforgiving. The moment you see people, you interpret them. You look like the person who defrauded me. If I look like the person, am I that person? past experiences some of you you came to church this morning carrying yesterday 
is the reason why you can't go forward. The luggage you have tied at your, your waist, your hands cannot move you forward. I need you to cut it away. Cut it away. Yesterday needs to go. Apostle, five men have come into my life. They tore my life into pieces. Let me not see any man in front of me. What if the fifth person is Jesus? Just what if, I'm thinking aloud, what if the fifth person is Jesus? Will you drive Jesus because five men destroyed your life? Four men came into my life, I lost my job. What if the fifth person is your destiny helper? Sent by God, anointed by God. It's dangerous to take your pain of yesterday and punish anyone in your today punish anyone in your tomorrow no now don't get me wrong the events past can be very painful their memories can be there but you have to brace up and allow yourself to be healed for someone God is bringing you that healing this morning it's time to move forward it's time to believe again it's time to trust again past experiences many of you have listened to my teaching you know our first crusade was almost a disaster today many people celebrate what God is doing around the world it was not always like that oh. it was not always like that there were meetings and crusades that were not up to maybe from one two three four five the fifth row like that fasting for weeks and praying and that's all the people who came for the meeting so don't 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 whip up sympathy and say you don't know what i'm going through you are joking the only thing you start digging from the top is the grave everybody starts from down up so i can tell you that the experience of pain and disappointment we've gone through it too you are not the first to be owing I've owed people too. I know what it means to owe. So when I tell you, let the grace for favor come, it's coming by revelation, but it's also coming from compassion. Is someone learning? You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Oh, Let me tell you one of the ways you will know you have conquered the past. You will not be quick to judge. The older people get in life, the more quiet they become. Do you know why elders are quiet? Because they have a plethora of pain. They made a lot of noise as young people. But by the time they clock 50, 60, 70, when they watch a young man jumping in pride, they say, my friend, I can't fail. I can't beat my wife. Just say, God, help me. I won't go to a herbalist. God forbid. I've been in ministry for 40 years. They will tell you, keep quiet. One of the ways you will know you are growing is every time you hear a lot of noise, you go on your knees and say, God, I don't know how they plan to do it. But if you don't show me mercy, I know that I will be a disappointment to my own self. Is someone learning this morning? I'm showing you how to rise. Notice the older people get, both in life and ministry. They will watch things happening. And you say, won't you comment? They'll say, me? I made a lot of noise 30 years ago. What then is the advantage of my growth? Some of you are young people in ministry here. Manage your energy, manage your energy because a day will come some statements you made you will have to bend your head in shame except God helps a man your noise will become the reason why people will stone you are you listening to me now when you hear that someone is having an issue with his wife just wish them well and pray for them don't say I've always known I even saw it by revelation How did I get here? We're discussing how mindsets are formed. Past experiences. 
past experiences. Are we together? Oh, it's been seven years and the woman has not been able to have a child. What is there in having a child? Huh? What is there? I mean, I just got married and that same month my wife took him. Don't worry. Let that child grow. That's why you will know why women cry at conferences. When they say women pray for your children, you will see mama crying. She knows what it means to raise seven boys and none becomes great. So she cries and said, God, even if it's one, let one child rise to wipe my tears. Whereas some young person there said, my child, look, let me teach you something. Learn wisdom this morning. The more you rise in the spirit, you let wisdom do the speaking, not emotions. Are you learning now? When you hear that people rejoice, rejoice with them. When you hear that people are in pain, pray for them. But the moment you become a referee over people's destinies, you have put yourself in a position where you would get severely punished. Past experiences. Let's get back to our discussion. How mindsets are formed. Past experiences. Number four. The fourth molder of your belief system is your level of exposure your level of exposure your level of exposure what does it mean to be exposed to see life from as many dimensions as you can see it now let me tell you the truth exposure is a great blessing if it happens to you correctly there are many people when you hear them speak you know that the problem is not a bad heart the problem is just that there's no exposure exposure when you are exposed to life in all its ramifications it will help you to see life from various planes are we together exposure finally for this discussion the fifth molder of mindsets the fifth molder of belief systems is the influence of associations the influence of associations in other words the kind of men and even models you are exposed to the influence of associations I made a statement back at home a few years ago I said if there are five people who are foolish around you you didn't count well there are six people and if there are five wise people around you you also didn't count well there are actually six people you will be a messless reflection of the summation of the mindsets that surround you. He that walks with the wise shall be wise himself, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walks with the wise, you don't need to be wise, just walk with the wise. The Bible says eventually you will become wise. But when you make up your mind that you are a companion of fools, the Bible says by that folly, you shall be destroyed. Now, everyone here seated and everyone following, watching by television or watching online, let me tell you the truth. What you believe today that has produced your realities has been shaped by at least five of these. Culture, your family background, your past experiences, good or bad, your level of exposure, and the influence of association. Very quickly, how do I build a winner's mentality? How do I build a superior belief system? Seeing that my life and my experiences in ministry, in business, in destiny will always be a reflection of my thinking. Seeing that my mentality is the official channel for the ministry of the Holy Spirit or the ministry of demon spirits to find expression in my life. How then, you may be asking, do I build a superior belief system? My prayer for someone up front is that it doesn't matter what has failed in your life. By reason of what you are about to hear now, may they become ladders for you in the name of Jesus. 
you imagine what you are about to hear now as a ladder that God just opened a door and said here is your way out of a mediocre life here is your way out of a defeated life here is your way out of a life void of the anointing here is your way out of a life of pain and regret and poverty and limitation you believe that shout amen What is the first key to building a superior belief system? Are you ready? Number one is called awareness. Awareness and recognition. That is the first key. Anytime you want to change, you first have to be aware of where you are. Alongside the limitations that have come from your current mentality. The lack of awareness is what limits the need for change. If I am not aware something is wrong with me, I will not embrace any treatment if you bring it. Look at me, medical practitioners. What's the first thing you do to a patient? Diagnosis, am I right on that? You, you seldom begin to just recommend drugs or treatment to a patient. So if someone comes and tells you that, look, it looks like, do you know there are times that people are sick and they do not even know they are sick? It's a professional who looks at them and says, your eyes are pale, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, most likely you have this. And the person says, I'm not even aware, because there are certain symptoms that don't come with pain. Usually, if it comes with pain and discomfort, it will force you to go to the doctor. But once the condition does not come with pain, and it does not come with discomfort, you can literally be dying and not know. Dying and not know that is the reason why factors like pain hunger they have their advantages because they are indicators that something is wrong are we together when you lack hunger and you lack your the ability to feel pain biologically you'll be in trouble because you can be in the midst of fire and it's burning you but you are not aware what do you do in the hospital when you give a patient anesthesia? You numb the person's ability to feel pain for a while and you can carry out a very delicate procedure, a procedure that would kill the patient, but simply because he's lost the ability to feel pain at that moment, even if he wakes up, you are not afraid. But for those who've gone under the knife, after a while, huh? after a while, suddenly you begin to feel pain then maybe they give you another one and they begin to manage it manage it until you are strong as much as the doctors want to make you numb from the pain you will still feel an aspect of that pain sometimes pain is not a disadvantage sometimes pain is a gift it helps you to know what is wrong so that you can correct it early not every dimension of pain is demonic there's a dimension of pain that is a gift. For instance, when you see the consequences of poverty early, you can go back to scripture and study what is the way out. If you see the consequences of not being saved early, you can go back and make adjustments quickly. Are we together now? So number one, awareness. Jacob was in a place that would have redefined his life but he did not discern that moment nor the encounter that was coming from there and he paid a price he said the Lord was in this place and I knew not look at me are you aware that if you reject the anointing you will pay the price are you aware that if you reject knowledge the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge it says but fools despise wisdom and instruction are you aware that wisdom is the principal thing and that in all you're getting you should get understanding are you aware that without favor living in this cruel and wicked world your life is going to be a plethora of painful experiences are you aware that everything that happens within the earth depends on relationships are you aware i wonder how many things you should know that you do not yet know the first key to mental transformation is an awareness of your current condition now please look up another instance I wish I knew your streets and your roads very well 
I would be able to do an effective example. But from the hotel where we were kept, assuming someone were there now and he says, Apostle, I want to come where you are. The first thing I'm going to ask the person is, where are you? Describe for me where you are. Am I right on that? If you can tell me where you are, then from where you are, I can create a roadmap to where you need to be. The prodigal son came to himself. He finally got a hold of where he was. And he said, from where I am, I will arise. I still know the way back home. I'm praying for someone here in the name of Jesus may you finally discover may you finally see your true state in light of your destiny and listen and come to an honest admission an honest admission that I'm not prayerful enough an honest admission I'm not diligent enough an honest admission I'm not virtuous enough it's not condemnation it's an awareness that allows for increase one way to experience deliverance is to be honest with yourself honesty and truthfulness the day you come to yourself most people are ashamed afraid of coming to themselves I'm a man of God I can be great but the truth is that I am still bankrupt of knowledge and I do not yet have the kind of anointing that can cause me to be trusted with global assignments come to yourself from that point you can now contend for genuine knowledge genuine grace are we together i'm earning glory be to god but what i'm earning cannot even feed my children nor my parents come to yourself be honest and come to yourself awareness and recognition is a miracle i've not been the best of fathers but i can change like we said yesterday I've not been the best of mothers, but I can change. I've not been a man of God doing ministry with integrity, but I can change. I've not been a businessman who has integrity. I can bend left and right depending on my needs, but I can change. Remember my example. A bottle of water can become a bottle of anything if it allows a new content into it. I think it happens here back at home there are times where they put cashew nuts you know cashew nuts they put it inside um, bottles that were used for any other thing and they sell it in the market does it happen here so you see a bottle that was once maybe a bottle of a drink or wine or whatever but what is in it now maybe cashew nuts and when you buy it you are not buying a bottle of water you tell yourself you're buying cashew because eventually you will empty and benefit from what is in it the original manufacturers did not manufacture the bottle for cashews but since it was used and it was empty the bottle accepted cashew nuts in it and the name changed that means if you are aware that this life of foolishness I've made careless decisions with my life because I do not have the information that makes for superior decisions but I can change it is not self-condemnation come to yourself you are 40 years, 50 years, with all due respect, you are still staying in your parents' home, maybe married with your wife and your children, you are still in that house. I don't condemn you, but come to yourself and tell yourself, I give myself a one-year goal, I need to get out of this place. That is not how God helps men. It is not the way it happens in the kingdom. Remember I told you yesterday, decisions. And you go and start getting materials that will help your mind, we, we, were, we had our conference a few weeks ago in the U.S. And there was such a humbling testimony. I'm sure many of you got to hear that testimony. A gentleman, quite a humbling testimony. This gentleman was in jail as a result of all kinds of things, you know, drugs. And, and whilst he was in jail, he made up his mind and his friend... A lady friend came and gave him some of my teachings and did you know he made a decision someone said decisions he made that decision right there that he would listen to those messages and right in jail he was given access to the teachings and he kept learning what do you think was happening a loser's mentality
winner's mentality although he was in prison and ladies and gentlemen in one year the gentleman had come out had bought a house had set things up and was winning souls for jesus one year go online it doesn't take time it only takes light if you can access light genuine light john 1 5 it says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not for someone you can change right where you are it can be a new day for you you can choose to remain poor you can choose to remain mediocre you can choose to have a bankrupt mentality many years ago i made a decision coming from my background coming from my humble estate i told myself if god is going to take me around the world to serve his grace to the nations the mentality i currently had cannot post that assignment i took responsibility i was not too proud to learn i said i can start from somewhere let me start by gleaning the mindset of people who had been global and i started getting the materials awareness is a miracle write that down awareness is a miracle when god brings you to a point where you are aware of your current state it plants a healthy dissatisfaction within your spirit you are a caterer but your mentality is limiting how far that business can go because in your mind you cannot cook for certain people and so you have not pressed for a level of competence and excellence kings cannot call you because your mentality will reject the call i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me someone is changing that one month from now when they see you it will be clear that the hand of God is upon you and someone will ask you and say what changed and you will tell the person I came for this conference and I sat quietly at the back and while the man of God was teaching my mindset started allowing the Holy Spirit for some of you as you are hearing me the Spirit of God is telling you this is what I've been trying to tell you for three years I used dreams you did not understand I used prophecy you did not understand I used tapes and teachings you did not understand I hope you now get it that I want to journey with you the destination is the nations but your mindset is not allowing us to go hear me Start from Takoradi, but get Takoradi out of your mind. Start from here, but see the globe. Start from here. Help that woman under the anointing. Start from here, but see the globe. Start from here, but see the globe. And don't let any naysayer and any mediocre make you feel you are ordinary you are this don't let the color of your skin turn your mind into a failure no many years ago from one room i read this that god is able to lift me and exalt me above the nations of the earth i believed it i believed it that all nations can call a man blessed and they will not ask you who is your father or who is your mother that the anointing the same Lord is rich unto all and he can place a grace upon your life that the nations can glorify God for who believes this who believes this right from the days of limitations I knew that we will feed nations by the grace of God we would be able to extend his love and his hand to nations because I found it here awareness 
Apostle, I'm the first of eight children and all of us are staying in one room and we're begging. Don't live a fake life. But from that one room, come to a place of awareness and tell yourself, in the lifetime of my parents, I will build them a house in Ghana. In the lifetime of my parents, I will become that access point. Do you know, when God wants to change a family, all he needs is one person who can dream with him. One man of God, one prophet, one apostle, one businessman, one entrepreneur, one leader. May that be you in the name of Jesus. Awareness. Awareness. My sister, you have been calling yourself a failure. God never called you that. Stop calling yourself what God did not call you. Don't allow mediocres and naysayers and those who grew up with you. Just when God wants to use you, they remind you, you this failure. Run away from them and begin to walk with the Lord. God is turning you to become Esther, to go to the palace. But they knew you as a village girl. If you remain with them, you would die in Sushan there. Look at me. Let me tell you one way God helps men. He takes you away from the environment of your history. Because something happens when you are in the midst of those who knew you. They will never appreciate what God is doing in your life now. They are too familiar with you. They are too familiar with everything around your life. You, that God is raising you to be a prophet. We were playing football in secondary school. But there is a call on my life. They will not agree. So God will take you away from that environment. To an environment that is conducive for your transformation. I always wondered why God took Joseph out of his father's house and he never returned to his father's house again because he needed to be in an environment that will allow for his growth. Some of you, God took you from one region in Ghana and brought you here to Takoradi. Maybe for school. It's not only for school. It's an environment that takes you away from naysayers and those who knew you, those who will see you praying and laugh at you and say, even you, you are praying now. Yes, sir. The miracle of awareness. The miracle, my God, I sense such an anointing. A strong anointing. I thought we'll leave this for evening. But it's like the Spirit of God is in a hurry to hold on to someone's destiny. The hand of God is upon you. God is saying, this is what I've been trying to help that man. I've been trying to tell you. There is much I can do with you. Bring them out. Let the hand of God come upon you. For everyone who is destined to be a savior, I release that anointing now upon you. This is an anointing for saviors. God is separating you. Separating you to be a sign and a wonder. Separating you to be a sign and a wonder over your family. I place grace. If you are a prophet, may that grace come on you. An apostle, may that grace come on you. An entrepreneur, may that grace come on you. I stir up that water. I stir up that river in the spirit. Grace coming upon you. Grace coming upon you. Oh, you can be that prophet. I stir up that water. I stir up that river from within your spirit, man. Let there be a clarion call. Deep calling on to deep. Deborah, deep calling on to deep. Esther, 
deep calling on to deep Gideon deep calling on to deep you have come to a place of awareness the place of awareness is a place of power the place of awareness is a place of glory the place of awareness is a place of grace the place of awareness is a place of change of transformation where a door closes over the old and opens you to the new more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life sing more love hallelujah the Lord is asking me to speak to someone and here's what I'm hearing that even in old age you will be fat and flourishing everyone can receive but this is a particular word for someone it seems time has gone you've made mistakes with your life great mistakes with your destiny and it looks like age is not on your side the Lord is bringing you a word of hope that even in old age you will be fat and flourishing even in old age you will be fat and flourishing even in old age help her you will be fat and flourishing even in old age you will be fat and flourishing please sit down if you can Something is shifting in your destiny. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hear me, I assure you by the God of heaven that after this conference, your life will change like night and day. Your life, your destiny will shift to such a degree. Some of you are in ministry. You may not know the grace. You may not know the influence. Something is happening within your spirit, man. Is when you get back to the altar, the kind of fire that comes from within your spirit. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Please sit down. We have to finish. For all those who are in front here, I place grace upon you. There's a reason why I ask that they come out. I decree and declare grace upon you. Grace to contend and submit to the transformative work of the spirit until you become until you are empowered until you become signs and wonders let limitations be swallowed from your life in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name please sit down let's hurry up so number one the first key to a superior belief system is awareness recognition Number two, 
Are you ready? Listen carefully. You want to adopt a superior mentality when you are aware. Now you know. Now you have seen the consequences of embracing your current mentality. The second step you take is through the ministry of prayer, you break the legal hold of demonic spirits that influence your beliefs to keep you in that state. Can I tell you, every perpetual mindset has a spirit guarding it. There are spirits that protect mindsets. I hope you know that your mentality is alive in the spirit. It's not just an abstract phenomenon. There are spirits that protect mentalities. That is what turns a mindset to a stronghold when spirits build fortifications around it. So you are talking to someone about what can change them. They will be listening to you like this, but they are not getting anything because there are spirit fortifications. When you are aware, the next thing is to engage in prayer. This mindset, I break the limitations that are stopping me from rising to a superior thought pattern. Here's what the Bible says. The weapons of our warfare. The weapons of what? They are not carnal, the Bible says, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds Casting down every imagination is the Greek word yet, sir, and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of God. Pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. They have exalted themselves above the knowledge of God. That's the reason why the word of God becomes of none effect. You will shout amen in church, receive prophecies, but nothing happens. Because as the word comes, it meets a spirit fortification. These demon spirits guard your mindset jealously to make sure your results does not change. Let me tell you this. Transformation is warfare. Transformation is beyond education. There is a warfare dimension to transformation where you engage and dislodge and break the legal hold. What you call generational causes come from generational mentality. Generational poverty is generational mentality. Generational attack is generational mentality. A superior life blessed beyond the curse is also a mentality. You don't just, you must cast away those spirit influences. Most people go straight to education and forget that these spirits are vicious. So they are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. You know why? Because these demon spirits will guard and protect it. And let me say this with all due respect, ministers of the gospel, before you come to stage to teach, take time in the place of prayer and challenge the spirits that hold on to the thinking of your members while you teach so you don't labor in vain. You can come do your research, pray and fast, and then not forget to challenge your spirits. You can stand and be teaching truth, but only strangers keep being transformed by your teaching. The members never grow because there is a, a, like a spell upon them. And you hear somebody far beyond it, you know, away from your ministry saying, I, I found your teaching and it changed my life. But the people who are under that grace never get changed by it. I'm telling you what is wrong now. Every man of God, take it as a challenge. Go and fast and pray. The covering cast over those God has given me that stops them from understanding what I am teaching and stops them from opening up themselves to come into that experience. I challenge it in the name of Jesus. And someone will tell you, I picked one message. The message that was preached five years ago and I was there, but I picked it and I had something I did not hear before. You know a miracle has happened. Are we learning? Is the reason why you counsel someone will tell you I'm a drunkard and you counsel him, you say, You know, this is not good for you. you say, I know, I know. I've been trying to stop. It's okay from now. Be a good boy. Uncle God bless you. By evening, they will call you to come and pick him on the ground. What changed? 
you think he did not want to listen to you demon spirit anything you cannot control there is a power stronger than you you need to engage a power stronger than it this is where the holy spirit comes in the flesh you are no match for spirits <clears throat> it's the reason why our sufficiency is not of ourselves we have to engage the power of the holy spirit to live victoriously so anytime you see people who this is where the realm of addiction is that you talk to people you counsel them they listen they even cry and they still go back again everything god gave man he gave man control over it whatever controls you a spirit has hijacked your will number one awareness number two you engage in prayer challenging the spirit influences behind those losing beliefs losing mindsets number three are we learning we have to wrap up content for renewal and transformation this is the first key content now that you are aware now that you have engaged in prayer you have cleared the airwaves then you begin to contend for renewal how do you do that number one by engaging the word for your learning number two by engaging word compliant materials from those whose transformation you admire don't study the life of anybody whose transformation you do not admire because you will become like what you are learning there are people whose transformation are a worthy model already in every area whether finances ministry marriage whatever it is in addition to scripture you get their teachings you get their materials you begin to engage their mentality because i told you mentality gives expression to your reality i remember those days when i got a hold of dr miles Munro's books discovering your assignment rediscovering the kingdom I sat down and I devoured those things with passion. I got materials from fathers of faith within our land. I got materials from several people. Joined it together with my Bible, my lexicons, my strong concordances. And I said, this is, this is a project to damage ignorance in my life. Hallelujah. I made a covenant with myself, a covenant that by God's grace I have preserved till date. That no 24 hour will pass without me recording progress in my transformation I have listened to yesterday's message the message I preached yesterday I've listened to it already for my transformation it's a it's a discipline greatness is not a gift it's a reward you must engage not even my preaching engagements disrupt my covenant of transformation no matter how tired i am i will never go to bed without listening to certain teachings i have a quota of teachings scriptures non-negotiable and sometimes humanly speaking i can get so tired i can get so weak but i remember do you love your tomorrow more than your today if so obtain grace to move someone learning don't give your life to chance and give flimsy excuses no you check my phone now there are the schedule for today teachings scriptures once i am done preaching i step back i'm no longer a preacher i'm a believer and a witness on my journey to becoming a greater version of myself and I submit as a student and learn with intelligence. I tell you why many people stop growing because they stop learning. They stop learning. They stop learning. If for any reason I miss out on the quota of my disciplines for a day, I have a disciplinary system on myself. Apostle God has called me to be a kingdom financier. Show me how many books on finances you are reading. I saw one summary like that online. You are joking. 
you want God to trust you with the wealth of nations and you went through a five minute summary no sir or you are listening to a material by somebody who is just selling things online no follow them who through faith and patience there are materials that the bishop has written there are books there are messages why don't you get it start from there start from there start from there favor is not working in my life it means something is wrong with my mentality get materials on favor and camp around it in prayer perhaps with fastings and while you are crying in the night everyone is asleep but God is seeing your sincerity one night you will go like before and collide with the anointing of your destiny you will come out of that encounter and you'll be a sign and a wonder contend for knowledge co-laborers in the gospel let me beseech you by the mercies of God these are not the times of laziness in ministry no nobody will come and sit under your grace to learn when you do not sharpen yourself you must be like an arrow that has been sharpened sharpened by scripture if you want to receive the reward of kings you must upgrade yourself to be able to serve kings some of you are here you are caterers let me challenge you after this conference go and do a professional program stop saying I'm cooking people like me who are those eating your food the reward you are looking for is in the palace you start where you are but you don't stay where you are is someone learning challenge yourself I'm a man of God but you can see the ignorance that surrounds your ministry with all due respect leadership zero sound communication of doctrine zero prayer life maybe yes there and there understanding of administration zero tell yourself from this day forward use one month damage ignorance put order to your life a bottle of anything can become a bottle of anything depending on the content in it is someone learning God has called me into the worship ministry but the nations are not placing a demand upon your grace I will tell you why go and stay in the secret get fire get wisdom get songs that become ladders of revival and watch God open doors for you there are many of you who do not need breakthrough if the door is open it will only be an embarrassment God is closing that door as a sign of mercy to wait till you are prepared stop crying for open doors when you are not prepared because when some doors open and you are not prepared they may close and not open again Apostle God has called me to be a prophet to the nations invest in prayer invest in materials what are some of the problems you have seen in the prophetic ministry ask the Lord to use your life to correct it so that you become a portrait of authentic ministry how about a businessman I go to bed and I see myself dealing with people at an international scale get up and buy materials go for certifications if you need to stay and learn submit yourself to mentorship this is the third key to having a superior mentality let me tell you something do not desire transformation at your own terms it is arrogance a student does not give a teacher time to teach him a student adapts and waits and works with whatever time the teacher gives the challenge I think with our generation is many people want to be successful at their own terms God I'm too busy come later on mr. man I hear you are a champion I need the grace upon your life but I'm busy wait for me when I'm prepared you will impart me unfortunately life does not work that way someone learning you have to challenge yourself adaptation is proof of honor learn to adapt open up yourself that's why I salute those of you who have paid the price some of you stay outside Takoradi but you traveled and you made this conference a retreat I salute you and you have earned my respect by your sacrifice because it tells me that you are serious about your destiny particularly if you're a minister of the gospel because you are busy having to shelve your engagement because you have seen that there can be a greater encounter don't wait for success to come and meet you at your own terms with humility and meekness you pursue transformation are we learning 
Number four. What is the fourth key to transformation? Use the law of repetition. On every quality information you find. Till the truth sink into your subconscious. Use the law of repetition. The law of repetition. Information does not get into your mind just because you are aware of its presence. You will need to repeat it again. How did you learn the songs that you are learning? You did not learn them actively. You kept hearing them while you were washing plates. And you did not know that it was being transported to your mind. Is the same way people learn nonsense they don't look for it they just hear it long enough until one day when you are hearing it you start nodding your head in agreement too it has entered your spirit hallelujah the purpose of the ears is not just for hearing it's also a system of transportation it transport truths until they are embedded within your subconscious this is true you cannot be transformed without repetition. 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 There are sermons, sometimes teachings, sometimes worship, sometimes prayer, sometimes I put them on repeat. How many of you have listened to a message and you slept off and in the realm of the spirit you were still hearing it? The message continued because it's only your body that was sleeping. And sometimes it becomes more graphic in the spirit as you are hearing do you believe what you are hearing it's true you submit yourself to knowledge you hear again and again even while you are sleeping you are listening to it the Lord is my light and my salvation maybe you get some scripture scripture on healing since God is calling you into the healing ministry you can go online a 15 minutes 30 minutes download and you just plug it in your ears and it's just raining down washing your spirit man you may not realize what is happening to you until the day you stand before a sick body from the residue the wealth of the word power flows and you will see mighty things happening within your spirit you cannot give God the word nor quality information five minutes ten minutes why are people addicted to the internet because they gave it time time creates intimacy time fuels passion if you give the word of God 10 minutes and you give internet, you know, there are people who wake up in the morning and they just want to check the date on their phone and later find out they've been four hours on the bed because from date, they see one notification. From there, they try to argue and say, no, it didn't happen that way. From there, they comment. From there, they have an idea. And from there, four hours of their destiny, gone. Turn that time to power. In the name of Jesus that at that night while everybody is sleeping remember he's sending you as a prophet to the nations you wake up in the night and while worship is playing scripture is playing in the name of Jesus you are praying in the spirit you are building capacity later on you listen to the message you read the books you are registering yourself among the great sooner or later the grace of God will fish you and bring you to a point of kingdom notoriety so four keys we're wrapping up number one awareness and recognition number two through the ministry of prayer you engage to dislodge the spirits that become strongholds over your faulty mindsets keeping you in that state number three that's where the hard work is contend for renewal contend for transformation start with scripture and add upon it relevant word compliant materials get the thoughts of superior people and then number four repetition 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 hear it again listen to it again perhaps i should give you number five can i add one more for you obtain grace from god and begin to make quality decisions that reflect your transformation obtain grace from God now that you have the information you obtain grace from God still in the place of prayer and begin to make quality decisions that reflect your transformation so for instance 
you have learned that they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God you obtain grace to pray father I obtain grace to be faithful in church I obtain grace to even serve in church and you get up you come to church when you hear that workers have been looked for in church there is a need for workers aha that is an opportunity because I have seen the benefit of kingdom service can I tell you the Bible says now that ye know these things it says happy are you or blessed are you if you do them the value of knowledge is that you turn it to action if knowledge does not translate to action you have missed the profit point of knowledge the profit point of knowledge is in turning it to action are we learning now the path of the just through transformation through renewal the path of the just in addition to understanding decisions the gift God gave you the gift of your will now I am teaching you that only a transformed mind can fulfill that scripture the more and more heritage that is in Christ is mentality dependent are you ready to pray mentality dependent you're going to pray two prayer points one you pray it seated then the final one I'll ask you to rise whilst you are seated right now I want you to begin to pray father I am ready to leave this level I am tired of this current level in ministry pray this current level in business this current level in my finances go ahead go ahead I'm tired of this level I obtain grace someone is obtaining grace from God I obtain grace a better version of me can evolve a better prophet a better apostle a better businessman a better lady a better gentleman a better student a better entrepreneur a better leader can emerge i obtain grace someone is praying take a minute to cry unto the lord i'm ready for the more and more i'm ready for an upgrade in the spirit i have learned the power of decisions i use that ability right now and i contend for transformation go ahead and pray a man of god has come past this mountain long enough it's time to turn northwards a business has come past this mountain long enough it's time to turn northwards it's time to give god space through your transformation to do much in your life to deliver much to your destiny Take a minute and invest in prayer. Take a minute and invest in prayer. Young lady, pray. Rising. rise in your name I don't know you reign it's in your name that I will rise I don't know you reign go ahead and pray I don't know in the name of Jesus ready for the final prayer point please rise up on your feet I'm going to ask you to make contact with someone if you can by your left and by your right to pray this prayer I want you to agree with someone if you can and for this final prayer point you will be the prophet of your destiny now you know the things God has shown you you know the tomorrow you have seen you are going to begin to call the things that be not as though they were 
you are going to begin to pray making declarations in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my path is as a shining light it shines brighter and brighter I decree and declare that the blessing of the Lord is upon me I decree and declare that I leave my lowly estate and I rise to a position of honor in the spirit go ahead and begin to declare the Bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified someone is praying someone is praying make declarations by the spirit make declarations by the spirit Gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising I say it again Gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising in the name of Jesus indestructible by the word of God I go from glory to glory the hand of God is at work in my life in the name of Jesus failure is far from me defeat is far from me limitations are far from me someone declare the hand of God is upon my life the wisdom of God is at work in my life in the name of Jesus I excel in ministry I excel in business I excel in ministry I excel in leadership I enjoy length of days I enjoy favor I enjoy length of days I enjoy favor every enchantment every orchestration of witchcraft against my life against my destiny I come against it now in the name of Jesus my prayer life shuts back to life my word study life shuts back to life the discipline of consistency I receive that grace go ahead and pray take a minute to invest in your destiny I reject poverty. I reject failure. I reject a defeated Christian life. I become a living epistle, a testament of everything that God has said. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Take a minute to pray. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me oh, rest on me Rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah you don't have to bring them out again we're wrapping up already now please listen I'll speak over your life now and then we we'll prepare for the evening but let me just lend my voice with the bishop and encourage you tonight is going to be a night of strange impartations hallelujah strange impartations you will be carrying graces you will be carrying graces the hand of God will be mighty upon your destiny and the reason is because the old is closing and a new season is opening are we together so let me charge you by the spirit number one 
do your best to come early pray and prepare your spirit number two invite as many people whether men of God your family members tell them here is another opportunity to truly encounter the God of all grace the God of all grace we are just vessels but when he shows up himself he rests like a hen upon her eggs when a hen rests upon her eggs she follows it through until they hatch this is what God is doing some of you are long overdue for a new season and when the Holy Spirit comes to mantle you it will be for you as it was Mary she said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man it says the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you this is what will be happening tonight and then let me request again those who are not able to make it here they can connect online and receive your family members invite them and tell them here is the link follow and receive the prayer don't just follow like you are watching a movie follow with intention and with seriousness and receive that which God has in store for you can I speak over you now in the name of Jesus some of you the work God has started right now even before evening you will return with strange testimonies I say it again even before evening you will return with strange testimonies hear me there are many of you as soon as we are done for this session the Holy Ghost will call you to one corner and you will start making destiny resolutions don't fight it when that nudging comes pick your phone pick your Bible and your paper start writing things you are dreaming with God out of those decisions will come the new you I release grace upon you and I decree in the name of Jesus that everything you have heard the grace to allow it manifest in your life may that grace be released upon you in Jesus mighty name we pray give Jesus a big hand clap